right here is one of the more uh, you know because this was a, oh, a turning point this was a turning point in history um, what happened uh, with uh, the uh, is that you know the Constitution says that we have to have a census every 10 years good morning and uh, so uh, we, we faithfully did that every year we did a census and you know somebody would go door to door and you know, say, well, how many you know children are in the house, and how many bedrooms do you have, and yada yada, all these different questions, and it was all put on paper, and then all that all that was taken back, added up together, and then those numbers were put together, and finally they added the whole thing together and came up with the census for the United States. That, and when we were a small country, with not a lot of people, it worked really well that way. The problem was that. Uh, um, by 1890, it got to the place where they realized that the time was increasing, and it got to the place where almost the entire year went by, I mean the entire nine years went by before they came up with the totals. So they would, they would never catch up. So by 1890, they said, we'll never catch up. So the census said, there has to be a better way to do this. And, and so they put out said, you know, propose something that's cool that'll solve this problem. I'm sure they didn't use the word cool, but yeah. back then they used some other word. And, but, you know, come up with something unique that'll change this because we, we can't go on this way because we'll never catch up, ever. And so that makes the whole thing worthless. And so one of the people who, who knew the census well and had actually done work at the census department was Herman Hollerith. And Herman Hollerith came up with the idea of creating a card with holes in it. And uh, by, by doing that, uh, he came up with a very novel solution to counting, because that was one of the big issues, is adding up all this stuff. So what he did was he created um, a device that would punch holes in a card, so a person could now take the, the census information and punch it in a card, and then the card would be placed in this device here, the handle pulled down, and then whenever there were, wherever there was a hole in the card, it would count up the counter. So all these are counters, and one of those counters might be number of bedrooms, one, you know, like one would be like three bed, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, etc. and how many people would be, you know, on each counter. And so you just pull the handle down, and it would do the whole thing at once. Mm -hmm. Add all those numbers at once. And then it even got more sophisticated, where it had this little sorter unit here. And uh, if they were trying to look for a certain thing, maybe like uh, all the people that had uh, under or over a certain amount of income, it, the little slot would open up and they would drop the card in there so they could actually group things that they were you know, specifically trying to identify and put them into different groups. So it was sort of like, that's uh, a manual sorter, but it did it automatically, it opened a little trap door and let them put it in there. So uh, it, it was amazing because now the census was done in, in months, uh, you know, in, in one year, you know, like three months, they did the entire census. So that was, tar that was transformative. And so Herman Hollerith was, was smart enough to realize if it's good enough for the census, how about insurance companies? How about, you know, they started thinking, it's like, this is the big business. I have just created this really amazing thing. So then he started selling that kind of thing. Well, uh, it, it didn't go unobserved. There was another company called CTR that was run by Thomas Watson. And CTR uh, did time recording machines, scales, all that kind of good stuff. So they were very tied in to um, large quantities of machines in lots of retail places and so forth. Uh, and schools and business. And when they saw what Herman Hollerith was doing, they said, this is amazing stuff. And they literally bought Herman Hollerith and his company. They just bought, bought him and the company. So he became an IBMer. And so out of, out of that, um, they modified his cards, which you can see originally had little round holes. Uh -huh. And I, IBM <laughs> yes, right. I love that. Yeah, I know. It's true. It's fun. So, so they, IBM and Herman Hollerith came up with um, uh, 
rectangular punches in a card, 80 columns to a card, 12 rows in the card. And uh, initially it was just numbers, and eventually they figured out how to put multiple punches in the card and make it do uh, letters as well, so they could do the alphabet. By the way, all caps, no lowercase, all caps. But you could do alphabetic and you could do numeric and put them on punch cards. And then uh, IBM just kept coming up with these great different machines that would utilize the punch card technique, and one of them was a sorter. Um, it could only sort one column of the card at a time, so if you had a six-digit number that you wanted to sort, let's say it was the identification number for you know, people or your pg and &E account or whatever it was, you'd have to do six passes on the sorter in order to sort all the cards, right? So it was a bit time-consuming, but given the fact that the sorters could do hundreds of cards a minute, that was sure a lot faster than doing it any other way. You know, and so uh, t needless to say, this technology just swept the business world, the entire business world. So IBM became uh, well known throughout the business community and very profitable um, because they basically had a lock on it. They had Herman Hollerith, they had all the technology, and they developed not only sorters and interpreters and all kinds of other machines but even more important was um, accounting machines. And these were all relay, cams, you know, <laughs> and so forth. But there, were, there was no real electronics, no tubes, no nothing in these. They were, they were just mechanical machines, but they could add, subtract. You could kind of make them multiply, but it was incredibly slow. So most people did not, but they did add and subtract. And they could produce all kinds of wonderful reports. And they had plug boards that were how you is how you program them. So it was, a, and you can see a picture here in the background of what a, a, a shop might look like, with uh, you know a key punch machine on one, and then a card sorter, and then there were all kinds of machines that would merge cards. They called collators. There were machines that would take cards that had been punched but didn't have printing on them that would call, were called interpreters that would interpret the cards and print on them. Uh, so they had a whole line of these different kinds of machines that were mechanical machines to do these operations. And they became a key component of, of organizations, essentially the first IT departments of, uh, uh, of firms. And uh, uh, it was just a, 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 you know, an amazing transformation. And the, um, the other thing that's amazing about this is this technology lasted 40 years. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, given today how, how fast technology turns over, it's hard to imagine coming up with something that had 40-year lifespan. That's for sure. Is, is, isn't that amazing? I mean, it really is. So, and you can imagine how profitable it is when you can take your older machines, refurbish them, and give them back to clients and have them run them for another 10 years. You know? that's, a, that's a wonderful business model that I think everybody would love to have. And IBM had it.